Welcome to Lecture for Psychopathology. We'll be talking now about uh, disorders. Uh, one of the ones you may see would be uh, delirium. Uh, so delirium basically is a, a disturbance of consciousness with reduced ability to focus, sustain, or shift attention. Okay. Um, so what does that mean, a disturbance of consciousness? Right? It's kind of like um, uh, normally you're fully conscious and aware of uh, uh, the things going around you, and you can pay attention to things. You can focus your attention. You can, uh, if you're attending one thing and you decide you want to stop attending that and attend to something else, you can. Uh, in a delirium, that ability, that process, gets uh, disturbed or, or clouded. Uh, so the person becomes uh, easily distracted, usually, uh, by irrelevant stimuli. Uh, it's also associated with a change in cognition or a development of a perceptual disturbance. So a change in cognition means something like uh, a memory impairment, uh, disorientation where you, people are no longer oriented to time, place, or persons. So they don't know where they are or, or when it is, that kind of thing. Or maybe even a language disturbance, not being able to uh, speak clearly, something like um, dysarthia, where you have impaired ability to articulate, uh, dysnomia, which is the impaired ability to name objects, uh, dysgraphia, which is the impaired ability to write, uh, aphasia, uh, rambling speech, uh, pressured, uh, incoherent speech, uh, switching. Uh, so any kind of weird language stuff can happen. So it's really broad, think kind of things that happen. And basically it's evidence that you're not thinking clearly. And we know that we can't see inside your head, so often uh, the disturbance is evidence via some sort of language impairment. But again, or there could also be this other thing, this uh, perceptual disturbance. Um, and usually not quite uh, like hallucinations, hallucinations, but it could be. More often, misinterpretations. So like if there's a, somebody uh, slams a door shut, somebody experiencing delirium, more likely it is, or more likely than somebody not, who's, who's not delirious, to maybe misinterpret that as being a gunshot, right? So they're more susceptible kind of illusions, too. So... Um, you know, often this happens when they're in a hospital. So, uh, laying in bed in the sheets, there's folds of the sheets, uh, seeing kind of animate objects in the folds. Like, oh, there's something under the sheets, and it's, uh, those are waves, it's coming to get me, you know. And maybe even sometimes hallucinations, you know, uh, where they, you know, see people hovering over their bed. Uh, and most often, with a delirium, <coughs> interestingly, it's uh, visual misinterpretations. So, things that they see, misinterpreting it as something else. Uh, another characteristic of delirium uh, develops quickly and fluctuates, uh, and by quickly I mean uh, can be within hours or even days, can still be quick. And then the fluctuation it goes from you know extreme confusion to usually brief periods of lucidity and rational thought. So they're kind of out of it most of the time and really out of it. And then there may be these little pockets of time where they kind of know where they are. And it's going like, well, what's going on? Where am I? Hey, what are you guys doing here? And they're kind of lucid and be able to talk to you again for a little bit and then they'll slip back into the delirium uh, and typically the symptoms are, are, are worse at night and you also have uh, not surprisingly then uh, a lot of sleep disturbance that goes along with delirium uh, also if you rule out stuff so it's not due to a general medical condition substance intoxication withdrawal um, can be due to multiple etiolo etiologies can also be uh, delirium NOS, and otherwise specified. Right? Um, so when you do the NOS, you're not sure what it is. So usually, if a, a physician would, would diagnose this and say, oh, it's delirium due to whatever, and there's some kind of identifiable uh, cause for the delirium. Uh, if they're not sure, then you get the, the NOS. Um, Okay. Uh, so, again, delirium is just kind of <laughs> being delirious, being kind of out of it cognitively. And it, there's some waxing and waning, but most of the time, not being able to, to, to think clearly. Okay, different from dementia, right? Uh, both involve cognitive deficits, but they're, they're different in important ways. Dementia involves the development of multiple cognitive deficits. It has to be two things. Uh, one, memory impairment, and then also beyond memory impairment, 
one other cognitive disturbance can be aphasia, apraxia, agnosia, or impaired executive functioning. And aphasia again is just kind of a general term for language disturbance. Uh, apraxia is kind of a motor disturbance where you you can't do motor stuff even though your body works. So not able to uh, um, sometimes coordinate your movements even though your arms work, but you can't make them work the way you want them to. Uh, agnosia, uh, people that can't recognize objects that they should know. Uh, and then impaired executive functioning is kind of a broad category that includes problems uh, planning, sequencing, or uh, abstracting, using uh, abstract thought. Uh, the change represents a significant decline. So this isn't just that, oh, well, yeah, people uh, get older, they don't think as quickly. That's not dementia. Dementia is different than there, and there is a, a, a kind of normative, slow cognitive decline. Um, and some people often get maybe uh, smarter uh, as they get older, but they also tend to think more slowly. The neurons fire more slowly. Is what happens to everybody. But that's a slow decline. Dementia isn't slow. It's uh, there's this. Uh, uh, it's a significant decline. Uh, it's going from you're, you're up here and then, you know, uh, not too far down the road later, there's a big change in your ability to, to uh, remember things or speak or organize your motor functions, those types of things. Um, the onset depends on the uh, etiology. So it's, it's a significant difference, and sometimes it can be uh, really uh, abrupt, that difference. Uh, but sometimes it can be more uh, more gradual, more more insidious. But even when it's gradual, it's still faster than your typical aging. If that makes sense. So so gradual, but not as gradual as just getting older. There is still that that, that difference. Uh, but how abrupt it is depends on uh, what caused it. You know, if there's a stroke that causes it, it'll be more abrupt than uh, perhaps other uh, other disease processes. Um, the course also depends on ideology, um, if it's going to be a, kind of a slow, continuous decline, or a stepwise decline, where somebody has, uh, you know, they, they drop a little bit, and then they maintain, and then they drop again, and then they maintain. That's usually when they're having a, a multi-infarct dementia, where they're having multiple strokes. So a stroke wipes out part of your brain functioning, then you're okay, you've got what you've got, and then another stroke happens, and now you've lost some more brain functioning. Um, but it's uh, typically always worsening. People, uh, without any kind of medication or intervention, uh, they don't get better once you develop dementia. It's always a worsening course, um, uh, unlike delirium. Okay. And it, again, you have to rule out that it's not just delirium. And delirium is usually a temporary thing that you can get better from. Uh, and you can have both. Somebody could have dementia and then have periods of delirium on top of that, superimposed on top of their dementia. Um, but you always want to rule out, okay, is this temporary? Is this seem to be a delirium? Or are these cognitive deficits I'm seeing more permanent? If so, then it might be dementia. Uh, last, uh, dementia is often associated with changes in personality. Um, and sometimes it, it seems like it's because of uh, irritability or frustration uh, that happens with the cognitive impairments, you know, so it makes you upset that you can't remember stuff and you can't think, th you know, like you're aware that you can't think the way you normally could, that you can't remember things and you can't name things, and it can make you grumpy uh, and irritable and frustrated, and sometimes that causes people to act differently and kind of be personality change, a personality change. Sometimes the personality change results from a disease process that's also causing the cognitive symptoms, right? So if you have uh, Huntington's disease, which is causing your dementia, that same disease process that's attacking the brain can also cause personality change. And so the personality change there isn't because you're upset about not being remember things. It's because parts of your brain are being affected by, by the disease. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, you can get kind of a heads up that dementia is coming uh, because the personality changes will actually precede the cognitive decline. Okay. In terms of uh, etiology, uh, the one probably most people uh, are familiar with would be uh, of the Alzheimer's type. So again, in the DSM you're not diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Right? That's not a, a DSM 
uh, disorder as a medical condition, but uh, dementia, because of the cognitive deficits, is a mental disorder, and if it can be caused by Alzheimer's, so you can be diagnosed with dementia of the Alzheimer's type. Um, has a gradual onset with a slow and continuing cognitive decline, but again, the decline is faster than normal aging, uh, so it does it is different. Uh, and typically, uh, it, it does result in, in death within 8 to 10 years. Um, uh, and this accounts for about half of the cases uh, of dementia. And that's probably why most people uh, are, are aware of it. It's a pretty common cause. Uh, and then the, uh, most of the others, not all, most of the others are, are vascular dementias. Uh, There's things like uh, strokes, you know, having multiple strokes. And strokes happen, when strokes happen, uh, you're getting... Um, the oxygen flow uh, uh, in blood to the brain being cut off for a brief period of time causing cell death. And when cells in the brain die, most of them don't uh, can't be regenerated. And so you're going to have loss of brain function. Uh, typically an abrupt onset with a stepwise fluctuating course and what we call a patchy pattern of deficits. And that means that uh, there'll be, you know, some things that they uh, also they can't do this one thing but they still can do this really well because whatever part of the brain that functioning uh, uh, that that uh, is responsible for that 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 process or that action didn't get affected, but this other part did. So people might, you know, not be able to play the piano anymore, but they can still um, uh, uh, paint, right? Because different parts of the brain do those different things. That would be kind of a patchy pattern of deficits. Um, Okay. Other causes would be, you know, other general medical conditions. Uh, a HIV, uh, late stage HIV, can cause dementia. Uh, Parkinson's, uh, which is not not always. Only 20% of people with Parkinson's typically uh, experience dementia. Um, Huntington's, which we already kind of mentioned, which can also be accompanied by uh, depression and anxiety. Uh, Pick's disease uh, or Pick's uh, FTD, uh, frontal temporal dementia. Uh, frontotemporal dementia, sorry, uh, which is uh, when the frontal and temporal lobes are um, deteriorating, they're atrophying, uh, which that uh, PICS, FTDs, is also associated with uh, disin disinhibited behavior. So people, some of these older adults that uh, are acting strange and doing kind of wild and crazy things and being really uninhibited, it could be part of this kind of disease process um, at play. Uh, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob, which is you know mad cow disease, which of course is the, you know a disease process eating brain, um, and then other things, uh, head trauma, uh, and then something we mentioned before I believe, substance induced persisting dementia. So you know do an enough drugs, you really can fry your brain cells and cause permanent um, cognitive damage. Okay, uh, dementia and depression. Um, important to, to talk about because 25 percent of people with dementia show symptoms of depression uh, you know so you have that lack of interest withdrawal concentration problems so there's a lot of overlap so you have to be real careful diagnostically okay does this is are these symptoms depression or are they dementia or is it both does this person have dementia and they're depressed because you can imagine if you have dementia and you realize you have uh, some cognitive slippage, it could be the cause of depression. It could make you depressed and you feel bad about it and you could develop uh, kind of organic depression. But there's so much symptom overlap, it could be, well, no, they're not depressed, they really just have dementia. You don't want to overdiagnose. So you need to be aware of dementia for that reason because uh, they overlap with depressive symptoms. Same thing, somebody who presents with uh, uh, an older adult maybe, uh, you think, oh, they look depressed. Well, no, they're not depressed. They have dementia. So your differential diagnosis, um, be aware of that. But then the other big thing is this thing, uh, pseudo-dementia, which isn't a, a diagnosis per se, but it's kind of a, a clinical phenomenon. Um, <coughs> where people that have uh, um, uh, depression, major depressive disorder, have cognitive impairments that looks like dementia. And so you might have overdiagnosis of dementia, especially in older adults, who aren't don't have dementia, they're just depressed. And because of the depression, they're showing these cognitive deficits. 
Um, so things to look out for, trying to distinguish between pseudo-dementia and real dementia. So dementia that are really just some cognitive impairments that coming along with depression. Um, you have an uneven progression over weeks. Um, so uh, over a fairly short period of time, uh, not that uh, steady decline. Uh, and you could also have an un uneven progression if they're having strokes. If you've ruled out strokes and it's still this real kind of uneven progression, kind of stepwise, then you're thinking maybe more pseudo-dementia. Uh, people with pseudo-dementia are more likely to complain of their memory loss. People with who actually do have dementia often try to hide it, so they're not going to complain about it to other people. They're going to try to cover it. Oh, no, uh, I didn't forget where I parked. I just uh, was taking a walk around the lot. It's a pretty day. Um, just checking things out. Uh, but people who are depressed and having some cognitive impairments will complain about it. Um, uh, their symptoms will, be, oh, symptoms will be worse in the morning uh, than in the evening with pseudo-dementia. And they'll typically, uh, they're more likely to exaggerate their amount of disability, how unable they are to do things. So again, it's that same thing about they're going to complain about it and they say, oh, and yeah, I just don't think I can do that because I can't remember anything. I can't think straight. I don't, can't do that project. I can't help you with this. I, I'm not able to do anything. Right? Whereas somebody who really has dementia is going to try to hold on to as much autonomy as they can. Oh, I can do it. Yeah, it's fine. I, I can do it myself. Leave me alone. Right? Uh, so there's a difference there. Uh, and then, obviously, the uh, another kind of easy one... Uh, usually in hindsight, is that the cognitive impairments improve with treatment of depression if it's pseudo-dementia. Right? So if, if the cognitive symptoms are, are due to depression, once you give them antidepressants or therapy targeting their depression, or both, if all those cognitive symptoms go away, well, they didn't have dementia. It was a pseudo-dementia. Um, okay, let me hear would be just the, the difference between delirium and dementia, which we've already uh, touched on, just kind of want to review. Uh, they differ a couple things. Uh, in onset, um, in delirium, uh, more sudden than in, in, in dementia, right? It's going to come on pretty fast, whereas dementia is a bit slower, right? Again, it's a cognitive decline that's faster than typical decline, but still not super fast. Dementia. But delirium is boom, wow, really out of it, doing fine, and then a few hours, a few days later, not fine at all. Uh, duration, delirium is typically brief, dementia is more chronic, uh, longer. The course, delirium, again, is that fluctuating, you can, they can kind of come out of it and be fine, uh, whereas uh, dementia tends to be this kind of downward trajectory where you're not going to get better without intervention. Uh, in terms of hallucinations, uh, uh, in delirium, can be visual, tactile, uh, can be very vivid. Uh, pretty rare to have hallucinations with a dementia. So if they're having hallucinations, you're thinking, okay, this is more likely hallucinations and cognitive impairment. Okay, I'm thinking del delirium, not dementia. And then uh, degree of insight into uh, what they're, how they're doing. Um, with uh, um, delirium, they have kind of uh, lucid intervals, uh, and then in dementia, depends on what stage they're at. Early stage dementia, uh, they are going to be aware of their some of their memory losses. Uh, late stage, you know, kind of as it progresses, their insight into their um, cognitive impairment will get worse, and they won't realize that they don't remember stuff uh, toward the end. Uh, and then in terms of sleep, as I said, uh, in delirium, you do have that disturbed sleep because it's often worse in the evenings. Uh, with dementia, there's less, uh, um, it's less often associated with disturbances of sleep. Okay, that's all for